Hello ladies and gentlemen, we are back with another misconception video and this time it is not about any planet. This is about nakshatras, misconceptions about planets and nakshatras. It's rampant in YouTube astrology. So let's discuss some of the misconceptions pertaining to all nakshatras in general. Alright, so the first misconception is that the Nakshatras ruled by natural malefics. It's terrible, it's bad, it's horrible, it's the worst. Okay. So for example, uh, the nakshatras ruled by Rahu, they say is very bad, which is uh, Swati, then we have Shatabhisha nakshatra, for example. And then they say uh, Anuradha is bad, then uh, why? Because it's ruled by Saturn, right? Mars ruled nakshatras are also bad. Right, so this is a very big misconception. No, it is not like this. And on the other hand, they say uh, nakshatras ruled by the planets, which are natural benefits. They are very good. They are the best of the nakshatras. Well, that is also not true. Like for example, Vishakha, uh, Vishakha nakshatra ruled by Jupiter. Purva Bhadrapada is also ruled by Jupiter. Unarvasu also. So they say that these nakshatras are always good. Okay. So, for example, they say if you have Venus in Pula Bhadrapada or you know Punarvasu, then you'll always have a good married life. Or uh, if you have your seventh lord in these nakshatras, you, your married life will always be smooth. All right. So this is a catastrophic blunder without seeing the horoscope and without seeing the dashas. Yes, there are people who do all this. Oh, seventh lord is in Jupiter's nakshatra. Wonderful. This is great for marriage. My God, this is a disaster. <laughs> I don't know why they do this, but uh, it's like they want to get things done very fast. That's why. Right? So these are very big misconceptions. So, so never, uh, never say that natural malefic rule nakshatras are bad and natural benefic rule nakshatras are very good always. Then the next misconception which people have is that your ascendant nakshatra is always good. <laughs> well, uh, your ascendant nakshatra is important. It's not necessarily good or bad. Okay. So for example, uh, suppose you are a Taurus ascendant and you have ascendant nakshatra as Rohini. Ascendant nakshatra means the nakshatra where your ascendant falls, the degree of your ascendant within that zodiac sign. So suppose you are Taurus and uh, Rohini is your ascendant nakshatra. So then you say, oh, Rohini traits are always good for me. Mm -hmm. Interesting, huh? Blunder. <laughs> then there's another theory regarding this only that any planet in my ascendant nakshatra is also good. This is another blunder. So, so for example, suppose a Taurus Lagna person has Rohini ascendant and Sun, the fourth lord, is in Rohini in the first house or in the Bhav chart, it can be in the twelfth house also. So then they say, oh, Sun has to give very good results because uh, they will say that, oh, actually Sun is harmonizing with my ascendant nakshatra. I don't know what's harmonizing. <laughs> yes. Uh, just like uh, manufacturing new words, right? So, now let me give you an example when this can be good, when this can be the worst thing to happen for you. Okay, so suppose you have ascendant in Rohini, and then you are having a good horoscope for marriage, which means good marriage means uh, stabilized marriage with one person lifelong. That is the definition of good marriage. Uh, suppose you have that, your overall horoscope is very good and you have a decent uh, career, decent, not, may not be very extraordinary and some decent level of creativity is there in the chart, then this can be fantastic because Rohini is a Sthira Nakshatra, this can help you to sustain your marriage for a long time and uh, it can enhance your creativity, okay. This is how this Nakshatra in the Ascendant can help you. And then also, if you have sun in Rohini, this can be a double blessing. But let me give you an example when this can be the worst thing to happen. Suppose you have a scandalous horoscope. Scandal means any 
anything you try to do, you are always in scandal. Or your name is always linked with some member of the opposite sex because of your uh, loose character, loose behavior, right? Uncontrolled mind and senses, prominence of the eighth and the twelfth, right? So if you are loose and you are running behind the opposite sex like dogs, then this could be the worst thing to happen. Having an ascendant in Rohini and then sun in Rohini, my God, it adds the problem by, it multiplies it by a thousand million times, All right? So before you blindly say that this planet sun is good because it is in the ascendant nakshatra, think 10 times or before you say oh I am Rohini ascendant you know everything related to Rohini is great for me think 10,000 times before you say like this all right very big misconceptions I see all the time people when I do consultations oh uh, no, why can't I go into creativity my ascendant Akshatra is you know um, Shatabisha for example Shatabisha why can't I be a doctor if I'm Shatabisha Nakshatra? For God's sake, there are so many things in the house. One ascendant, I mean, there are so many people, uh, seven, seven, six, seven billion by 27. <laughs> How many will have a particular Nakshatra? So it doesn't mean all Shatabisha Nakshatra ascendants uh, will become doctors, right? Just because it indicates 100 physicians. Okay? And doesn't mean that just because you have Shatabisha ascendant, you should go into medical line, not necessarily. You might go if other combinations support, but not necessarily, okay? So do not think that uh, whatever is there in my ascendant, that's all, okay? That has a very important purpose, but you have to know how to extract which feature of the nakshatra. Like Rohini has two features, for example. One is, you know, uh, the bad side, which is, you know, scandal all the time and the other side is long-term sustenance it's a dhruva nakshatra so now which part of that ascendant nakshatra will be active for you that you got to find out yourself an experienced astrologer must be able to do that otherwise there's no use all right uh, it's just like bluffing okay now i'm not saying it's easy it's very difficult to find out which there are millions of things Rohini is related to you know or cultivation people with people in agriculture also has Rohini. but then people with uh, fashion industry also has Rohini. so now if everything is in front of you then you must be able to say that which aspects of these nakshatras will be active in my life and when it will be active okay that also you must be able to say because if you just say oh you will do good in agriculture. Your ascendant is in Rohini, but then, okay, when, how? <laughs> All right. So these are questions you should be able to answer. And the next misconception is, certain nakshatras are always good. Certain nakshatras are always bad. Okay. So for example, uh, in the supermarket of fake YouTube astrology, there are uh, abundance of. Uh, good nakshatras and bad nakshatras <laughs> and in fact uh, when I talk to Amanji from Aman Vedi Astrology he, he always keeps telling me you know oh, his reputation is <laughs> bad certain nakshatras reputation is very good certain nakshatras reputation is very bad okay so number one they say you know Jeshtha nakshatra is very bad so any planet in Jeshtha means your life is finished all right uh, go and commit suicide. Don't live. You have no right to live if you have a planet in Jeshta. The other nakshatra, which is the worst, the worst of the worst of the worst, is Mula nakshatra, especially in South India. I get mails from South Indians, especially. Uh, they tell me that uh, in South India, the astrologers say, if a boy or a girl has moon in Mula nakshatra, they will discard the horse. They won't even open the horoscope for uh, Kundi Milan compatibility matching. What a level of <laughs> this is how they are doing such high level of stupidity. So Mula is very uh, Mula is derided in the south okay, and in north India they will deride Kritika Nakshatra always. I don't know they will say if you have uh, Venus in Kritika or Laknesh or Ascendant Lord or Seventh Lord in Kritika. 
then you should not get married. You know, your marriage won't sustain. They say like this. <laughs> so Amanji used to tell me, you know, Jaista is there, Kritika, ah, Muda. Then another is Bharani Nakshatra. My God. It's like Bharani is Yamraj. Whatever is in Bharani is taken away from you, right? That's the level of stupidity people have. So if they, so they think in Bhar, Venus is in Bharani, so your wife will die or your husband will die. Why? Because Yamaraj is taken away from you. Okay. Yeah, this is what they think. <laughs> Bharani has a million traits. Which trait will be active for you? That nobody knows. Okay. That your horoscope will tell. And then another thing, as I said, the other extreme. Certain nakshatras are always good for you. So in the fake supermarket of YouTube astrology, there are certain very fancy nakshatras, you know. One of the nakshatras is Pushya nakshatra. You know, they say Pushya is very good, it's the best nakshatra, it is blah, blah, blah. It is like anything in Pushya is always good. They say uh, even Mars in Pushya, although it is debilitated, it is very good because, you know, Pushya is a very good nakshatra. Okay. Then they say that uh, Rohini is a very good nakshatra. Okay. Anything in Rohini means it will always expand. What if it's your defamy and your scandalous behavior which is linked with Rohini? You're right. So that also expands, you see. So now you decide what you... Uh, is it good or is it bad? Okay. What if your disease, the planet which is giving you disease is in Rohini. So your disease is expanding all the time, right? So is it good? Is it bad to be diseased or what do you think? <laughs> Okay, so then another nakshatra they say is um, Hasta nakshatra. Hasta is always good. Okay, but uh, you'd be very surprised to know if Hasta is linked with the sixth house, then it can show extramarital affairs. Just just as a piece of information, I'm giving. Okay. Now, now many of you will write, "Oh, you are stupid. Uh, you are speaking false lies. You know, my six lords in Hasta. I'm not. I I didn't sleep with another member of the opposite sex. I'm married to my spouse. You know. Well, there are some other placements which are indicating that maybe in your horoscope. All right. So again, don't judge things from one placement. Okay. This is just an indication. If your horoscope supports extramarital affairs. And you have Hasta Nakshatra related to the sixth house, then this can be a precarious situation. And uh, the, the funny thing is, they will do it in such a way, uh, it's unfortunate rather, that the opposite, uh, the spouse won't come to know, alright? So that's one. And another thing is, Uttara Falguni is very good. Why? Because it deals with contracts, negotiations, you know, all this. Well, what if the planet which is giving you lawsuits is uh, linked with Uttar Falguni? That whole life you will be, you know, running behind signing documents. Okay, court case, this, that. Yes, Uttar Falguni does all this. Okay. So, therefore, uh, don't blindly say that certain nakshatras are always good, certain, certain nakshatras are always bad. Another another misconception, you know, Purva Bhadrapada is horrible. Uttar Bhadrapada is very good. In fact, the level of ridiculousness I have seen, there was one video where I had seen, uh, all the Purvas are bad, you know, like Purva Ashada is bad, uh, Purva Falguni is bad, and you know, uh, then uh, Uttaras are good actually, they say. Uttara Falguni is good, you know. Uttara Ashada is good, you know. Uttara Bhadrapada is good. So, again, I mean, good and bad for what? There are millions of things in this universe. So, it may be good or bad for certain things, but how is it affecting your life? What about you, sir, madam? Is it good for you? Even if it is good for you, which area is it good? So, so, for example, uh, they say that Varni uh, Nakshatra is bad. Okay. But what if you are a Cancer Lagna and you have uh, a planet in Varni? What about that? If you have Venus in Varni? Fantastic it is. Why? Because the Lord of the 11th house is situated in the 10th house in its own Nakshatra. Fantastic, this is. Okay. Why, why do I say own nakshatra? Because Varni is ruled by Venus. Okay. So Venus is indicating the 11th house as nakshatra. So you get a lot of money. 
and then the bharani traits will be active bharani also shows control and doing something at a big scale because bharani shows the elephant elephant is very big it's huge large size okay so the another thing yeah so then this is something very good so your work will involve you doing all this and you might be like yamraj yamraj means you might have to take control of people you might have to punish people who are doing wrong things so is that bad for you is that good for you that's great for your career right you are in a great managerial position but now if suppose you are a leo lagna and you travel on the day of pushya nakshatra my god you might have it totally why because pushya is falling in your 12th house for leo it's in cancer is the 12th house right pushya is entirely in cancer so it might be lethal for a leo lagna person to travel in pushya nakshatra now again this is just an example i'm saying doesn't mean you will die you will have an accident you will go to icu you will be killed or you will be murdered if you travel on pushya all right you could travel but just a precaution i'm giving from your my side all right then another misconception is uh, the ascendant nakshatra where your lagna lord is sitting is always auspicious like the ascendant nakshatra so again as i said uh, if you are leo lagna then if your uh, sun is suppose in the second house okay it is in um, hasta nakshatra virgo for example so then they say hasta is always good so you should go into you know computer skills you know typing and all this nonsense it industry basically but hasta represents so many things you can be into gardening you can be to you know carpentry you can be to anything but what what is that area which you will be in? so and is that supporting the overall flow of the horse if it is not then it is a very bad nakshatra okay quote and quote bad because in kaliyuga youtube astrology 90% of the people there they are not interested in uh, learning the lessons actually so in a day i get around 3 to 500 comments out of them 95 to 98 percent of the comments if i take a ratio around 95 percent the same old boring questions my planet is here is it good or is it bad this is the same boring question which they've been asking from the next from the last thousand years and still they have not figured out the answer is it good or bad all right so the questions are like this, you know my lagnesh is in bharani and my navamsha lagna is in you know pushya is it good or is it bad I don't know how to make sense of these questions. <laughs> it can be great, okay. It can be the worst, depending on your chart. Okay. And another misconception people have is <laughs> that, like, there are different types of nakshatras. Okay, like uh, you have, you know, Chitra nakshatras, then you have, you know, Mridu nakshatras, then you have Dhruva nakshatras. You know, the Dhruva nakshatras are like uh, Rohini, then you have Uttar Falguni, Uttar Ashada. of hadrapara this there are some examples of dhruva nakshatras then your mridu nakshatras like you know anuradha you have in omrigashira if i'm if i'm recalling it correct so they say <laughs> anything you want to do you should plan them accordingly like in the muhurat so let's uh, let's uh, have an example <laughs> if anuradha falls in the sixth house of your bhav chart so they say anuradha is great for meeting somebody okay meeting new people dating meeting a prospective spouse or meeting friends meeting relatives okay they say like this but what if this anuradha falls in the eighth eighth house or not even eighth house i would say sixth house then the moment you meet this person bang there can be a fight there can be quarrels there can be disagreements there can be disharmony so be careful when you uh when you analyze it blindly blatantly without doing a proper analysis of your chart and another thing is people think that uh the nakshatra lord is not important so suppose you have a planet in anuradha that planet decides only 20% the nakshatra lord decides the remaining 80% yes this people don't know so so they will say okay suppose my uh, my venus is in 6000 suppose 
but suppose it is in a nakshatra of a planet who is sitting in the 11th and is also lord in either of the 2nd or 7th. I am just giving an example. Then the person can get married during that session. And then you tell the person, no, 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 your Venus is in 16, no, you cannot get married, it's not possible. So this is the worst blunder people do. They will take one thing and they won't, they will check the planet, they won't check the nakshatra lord. Alright, so these are royal misconceptions which people have. Another misconception is they think uh, the nakshatras where Rahu Ketu are sitting, they are always filled with trouble. Yes, well, definitely it could happen if the horoscope is bad, but um, it doesn't mean that um, you will always have trouble during Rahu Ketu Antardashas or the traits of the nakshatras where these are sitting. So if you have mastered these nakshatras and the dark side, every nakshatra has a bright side and a dark side. Okay? So if you have mastered the dark side, then you will have great things. If you have not mastered, well then you will suffer. You will roam headlessly uh, like an animal without knowing anything in life. Okay? And that's what happens to most of the people in Kali Yuga. They, they are so lazy, they are so much uh, disconnected from themselves that they are totally least interested in mastering the dark side of the nakshatras. Okay? And then they will uh, go on doing some uh, useless, cheap, uh, faltu, bekar, totka remedies, <laughs> which doesn't work in a thousand years. And then they will go like this for 20 years, you know, they will keep running from one astrologer to other, you know, like, uh, have you seen honeybees going from one fl flower to the other, you know? In fact, there was one person who told me, uh, in the last five years, he had visited, you know, like uh, more than 50 astrologers. So if you divide 50 by 5, it is 10. So it's like every month, this freaking person is visiting one, 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 one astrologer. Why? Then I asked him, why are you visiting, sir? What's wrong with you? And then he said, you know, I was uh, visiting them for, you know, totkas and remedies. Hello, what kind of remedies, you know? Oh, like, you know, throwing some liquid in water or, you know, uh, like sitting and doing certain things, you know, like some, not, not mantra exactly, you know, some uh, shortcut, some cheap mantras, you know, like some 1008 times, you know, like not 108, 1008. <laughs> so they will do it only for that time and then they will forget, right? So it's like a... Uh, I don't know, it's pathetic actually in Kali Yuga. Okay. And then some stones they will wear, you know, with combination, you know, like multi uh, alloy stones or something like this. Or sometimes within one ring they will have two, three stones. Have you seen people? So, so that's the problem. Uh, and that is why these nakshatras and malefics always haunt you day in and day out. Because you are not facing them, you are running away from them. Every planet is not Jupiter, Venus, that they will embrace you. Some planets will embrace you, provided you do the hard stuff first, all right? So these are some of the misconceptions of nakshatras. And there are many others which I will say in some other video, hopefully. So if you are new to the channel, then uh, please subscribe to it. And if you also know some of the misconceptions, or if you have uh, checked in your research and saw these things don't work, uh, some other things don't work, These, this works, that doesn't work, then please write it in the comments. And if you want to check other videos on Aksutras, I'll put it here. And if you want a consultation, please go to my website down below, exoticastrology.in. And God is there with you all the time, just look to him and you will find him.